All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, you see it in the background. I'm sure you saw it in the thumbnail. We have got some spoilers to talk about today. Okay, let me go ahead and dive straight into this, give you guys a quick layout. I will have everything time stamped if you want to skip around to wherever you want to. But guys, first things first, we do have to handle the lab for the day. We've got a what looks to be a very interesting game of Luchi versus Green Uda. That'll be the first game from the lab we'll check out today. From there, we will hop over to the, the One Piece Bandai YouTube and check out the video they put out last night. And, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see some of the spoilers. And then that will segue directly into the second part of that. It's like a part A, part B, where we break down all the cards, look at the translations that came out, and we'll talk about some of these new cards that came out, like the card you see on the screen right now. Very interesting stuff, okay? Uh, from there, we will finish up the video with one quick game on the sim of me playing Gecko Moria, just a fun OP08 version we'll talk about, we'll, we'll look at and analyze. And then we'll finish up the video with a, with a quick, you know, uh, recap of that deck list, kind of break it down and, uh, you know, wrap it up in that way. Okay, you know what you're getting into, guys. Let's dive into this. I really want to go get to these spoilers, so let's watch this game first so we can get straight to the, uh, the new cards coming out, because I'm very excited. I love... I'm very excited, guys. I love when new spoilers come out. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into it. Like I said, first things first with the lab. Okay, let me move this picture here. And this one didn't line up perfectly. It was almost the exact dimensions I needed, but that's okay. We'll, we'll make do. For anyone who is not aware of what's going on at this part of the video, I, at the beginning of every one of my videos, I have something called the, the lab or the VV lab. And it's where people in the community will submit a video for me to review. So if you're interested in me reviewing your video, no problem, record it with a, with a free program, something like OBS. You can then upload it to YouTube and then hop on the Discord and then post it in the Review My Game tab or the Review My Game channel. And I'll put a thumbs up to it next to it as soon as I see it and I'll throw it in line to be reviewed whenever it's, whenever it's your turn. So uh, had to get that out of the way, guys, for anyone new who's watching this who might want me to review their games. All right, now we can hop into this. We have got a game here. Actually, let me make sure volume's off, quality's up, speed is on 2x. We are good to go. So we have got a game here of Luchi versus Uda, okay? Um, I think on paper, uh, Luchi is very well geared to win this by just removing tons and tons of characters every single turn that they need to. Because notice in hand right now, we have double Luchi. We don't have the stage, though. That might that might bite us in the butt. You know what I mean? That, that might come back to hurt us later. But Luchi has a very good time at removing cards on the board. However, what makes this matchup interesting is Uda can completely fill the board. Right, uh, Green Film, for those who are not aware, can just flood the board. And it has a lot of card draw to keep up in that way. And it's a, it's a mono, you know, mono green five life leader. So it has a lot of ways to stay in the game. So let's see what happens. And I have no, no idea who wins this game, guys. I do not pre-watch these. Okay. So Lucci, <clears throat> excuse me, Lucci has filled up three cards in their trash, which is good. We're going to need cards in our trash so that we can use our Lucci, our uh, four-cost Lucci. Swing for six here. Going to use a 2K counter. Okay, Say, saying hi in life, which I do like that. Let me say something about that real quick. It's not a bad idea to stay high in life total versus green Uda because as they go very wide later into the game, they fill up their board. They go very wide, so they have lots of attacks. However, they also have this card called I'm Invincible, it is an event that allows you to swing again with your leader. It stands your leader up to attack again. Okay, so this Uda is playing a version that runs the um, the Trafalgar Law. Got a oh, very very nice. So I never I didn't see when we got the uh, Brook in the trash, but Rebecca plus Brook. I've been ranting and raving. That is so strong. That's exactly the way that needed to go, and that was pure value right there. That was just a perfect setup, and we're in good position to start this game off as Lucci. The only thing that could have made this this um. Excuse me, the only thing that could have made this game better was getting the stage on turn one, which we did not get. But Spandam's not bad either, right? Spandam's not too bad either. Okay, let's see what Uda does now. They're down to four life. They're going to swing six. They did get a Bluno to their hand from the leader effect. And they're going to play out a four call 6k uh, vanilla body Zoro. That's a film straw hat uh, supernova Zoro type. Playing out the Sabo on curve is never a bad thing. We did get to a stage, which is nice. However, we won't get to have that stage. Let me pause for a second. It's unfortunate we won't have access to that stage on our Gecko Moria turn, right? Like next turn, we'll be on 8 Dawn. So if we try to play um, Gecko Moria on curve, which, which, which we do not have to do. We don't have to do that. 
but we will not have access to the stage to get like maximum um, potential out of that uh, that interaction. Very nice there. So notice that they cycled out, and let me go back for a second. They did cycle out a Luchi, right? Did I did I see that correctly? So play out the Sabo. Sorry guys, we just have to watch that. Yep, so we already got one Luchi in hand, and we want Luchi in our trash anyway for a span down combo later in the game with Rebecca. So we'll trash one of those, and then let's see what else we trash. I like the idea of trashing Sabo, absolutely. Because one thing that needs to be said about Sabo, as the game goes on, and as you have less cards in your hand, he loses so much value, right? And it's not that he's a bad card. He's never a bad card. But it loses a lot of the value that it has in, in the in the mid-game where you have tons of cards in hand still where you can make very good decisions. Okay. So right here, we're going to swing for six. Minus one there. We can't really capitalize on that. I do agree with this. Leave your Brook active. Even if they can tap it down and KO this turn, it doesn't matter. It forces a, an attack into that and a card out of hand. Swinging in for five. Okay, I might have taken that. I might have taken the five and, and then 2k counter down to the six. So I personally here, what actually, hear me out. Since you were willing to give up two cards right there, since you were willing to give up two 2k counters, was that correct? Let me see something. Uh, let me see something. We gave, yeah, we gave up two 2k counters. So hear me out. Right here, if, if you're willing at this point, which is fine, that's not a play mistake. If you're willing to give up two 2k counters, why not just block with the Sabo to get a free block off? And then if he loads up everything into your Sabo, Number one, that's his whole turn. But otherwise, we, we were willing to, to push him to 10k anyway for the turn. You see what I mean? Like, I feel like... Notice... Let me say something about the 5k attack from the Uda. That means he wants to play out his 7 cost Luffy this turn. So if he, it's, if he swings for 5, blank with that leader... Because remember, every time you attack with that leader, you get to draw a card if your deck is made correctly. Every now and then you might whiff if you've got some, um, some non-film cards in there. Every now and then you whiff. But you always take the chance to draw a card. So, since they swung for 5, we know they're only swinging for 6 with their Zoro because they want to play out their 7 cost Luffy. You see what I'm saying? And I have, again, I have not seen this, this game, but I'm predicting that's what they're going to do here or some other equivalent of a 7 Dawn turn. So, right here, block with Sabo. We save a card from hand. Then they would probably swing 6 into Sabo, and we could just 2k counter out of that. Or if they swung 6 at life, it's still a 2k counter. Okay, now it's their turn. We, we counter out of that. All right. Play out the Luffy. Yep. Play out the Brook. Play out the Usopp. Yeah. So like I said, we would have one extra card in our hand right now, or we could have just taken it. I would have I would have actually been okay just straight up taking it, to be honest. Uh, but okay, so we're on an eight dawn turn. <laughs> we, we do not have... Let's see here. I, I would not even play the Gecko Moria this turn. That's all I'm going to say is I would not even play Gecko Moria in this situation. I do not know what happens. But just looking at the board state... I would be doing things a little bit differently, and I would be capitalizing on my board. Like, for example, I would probably swing for, let's see, they have the Luffy, which is very annoying. I would swing for six into their Zoro. Let me see if we can minus one, minus two. So one, two, three, four. Well, we, we will not be able to deal with the Luffy at all. Luffy's just going to get a free attack. So, I, or, or, excuse me, a free block. So I think I would swing six into the Zoro with my with my uh, Brook first, minus one to let's just do minus one to the uh, the Usopp, put him down to two, and then I would swing for six more into the Zoro, minus two, minus one with the leader effect to the Brook. That would put him at a three for the turn, and then I'd plop down the stage, minus them both, plop out, plop down the. Um, the Luchi and pop the, the three cost and four cost for the turn and move on from there. Hopefully get some cards out of hand, sit on my blocker. And then next turn, we can follow up with a huge, a massive um, Gecko Moria turn. You know, assuming we have um, the Spandine in our trash, I'm not sure what the deck list is. This guy did leave his deck list. Yeah, we, we will check out the deck list after this game. Uh, but I'm assuming there's a Spandine in the deck, but it might not be in his trash yet. Okay, so we decided to play off the stage and minus two there. So that's going to be our first target, right? With um, That's another way to do it. Uh, that's a, that's definitely another way to do it. So they're going to end up popping the, the uh, Zoro with the Luchi. I would rather get the free attacks into the Luchi. You see what I'm saying? Or excuse me, into the Zoro. And then we can get stuff out of the way with, uh, with our, um, you know, by popping. How, how do I say this? Attacking into life. I can almost, I bet he's probably going to take this or just block 1k counter out. Right, like that's probably what he's going to do in this situation. Whereas, like if we swing at his guy, number one, he'd have to do the same thing. He'd have to block it, and then we swing into it again. He has to block it, and then we can just pop the two characters we want to pop anyway. 
All right, let's see what happens. 70 to 5. I would just take this if I was Uda. Okay, they're going to give us a... Or, or, excuse me, they haven't, they haven't done anything yet. 2K, 1K. That was odd. Okay, so, so I will say this. I think that was a play mistake by the Uda player. Why not just block and counter out? Because you're not swinging with Sabo this turn. I, mean, I guess you can. You can actually swing with Sabo. But I wouldn't personally. I would just leave Sabo up so I'm, I'm nice and safe. I can block the cards I need to. Or actually, the more I'm thinking about it, we're at 5 life. So I will add on to what I was saying earlier. How I would swing... I would swing 6 into that Zoro 3 times. One will be met with a blocker. And actually, this guy was just countering out. He was just giving us cards left and right. And then I would pop the Usopp in the uh, Brook. I would just get whatever I could from him that way. Totally taxing his hand and still getting two cards off the board at, at a minimum. Okay, so four in here. We're just using that to use the... We're not actually attacking for an attack that will hit. Which is another reason why I don't understand why they didn't use... They saw we had four Dawn left, right? So why would you not block with the Luffy in that situation? I think that was a play mistake from our opponent. Okay, so we're going to pop the Zoro and the, um, and the, uh, what's his name? The, the Usopp. And now we can pass with our six, with our, um, 6k blocker. And it's time to start taking hits here, I think. Like, like, okay, let him have that. Okay, going to counter out. I, so, so I personally would let him have that because we're probably going to bring, like, my logic would be we're just going to bring that back next turn with our, um, with our Gecko Moria. Okay, play, they play out the useless kid. This is where things might get ugly. Things could get ugly at this point. They'll play that out. They have two blockers here. We have two cards in hand. Um, I need to see the trash. I wonder if we have a Spandine in our trash with the Rebecca combo. Because that could be huge here to get something off the board. Okay, swing five just to do minus one to something, right? Uh, oh, okay, so here's the trash. We do not have Spandine in our trash. So that is that is less than ideal. That's no one's fault, right? You can't determine if it's going to be in your trash at all times. There might be a Spandine in his life for all we know. If, if, if it's in the deck at all. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I would attack and just at least do minus one to something here. Like maybe minus one to the Bluno. And then we can minus two. Actually, let me see what we can hit. We have two, three, four. We can minus four. So yeah, we can get rid of the Brook and the uh, Bluno here very easily. Okay. Oops. Sorry, guys. Was it already playing? Hang on. It's not, it's not playing now. Ah, it messed up on me. There it goes. Okay, are we, are we still on 2x speed? We're good. We're good to go. Okay, so we're going to do minus two to the um, to the brook. Got to be careful here. You know, um, uh, yeah, so we do want to play out the uh, Luchi. So swinging for eight, minus one there. If this guy's smart, I would just block. Yeah, because cause you're obviously going to use Luchi here or so, some type of equivalent since we minus one to that card. Okay. So let's see what happens here. We're going to go ahead and pop that. And now we can swing eight more with the other Luchi, or excuse me, nine more. Sure, get a 2k counter out of hand. Nice. Okay, uh, we're not out of the, you know, we're not out of trouble yet, right? We're not out of trouble yet. This guy's probably going to swing 9 into Luchi. That's just a good play here. If he swings 9 at life, this guy might just not know what he's doing. Well, 7 into 6 first. Sure, sure. You know, that's fine. Swinging for 7 was weird there. I would have only swung for 6. Yeah, th there's no way I would have swung for uh, 7 into a 6k, because if, if we did have a 2k counter, we could have gotten out of it regardless with one card. But we were just going to let it go, right? We have one card in hand. We're not giving the blocker. So seven and a five. Very nice. We did get a... That is a nice trigger to get right there. Excuse me, not trigger. A nice event to get. We'll be able to draw cards and, and remove stuff next turn. Excuse me. This is why it would have been really nice to get rid of our um, our uh, Brook as well earlier when they were swinging in and save cards in hand. Okay. They smash in. Use the blocker. Okay. Trying to stay out of range of I'm Invincible. I do understand that. Minus there. Minus there. Okay. And we got a... Um, Man, and we got an Ice Age. If we could just get... Let me put my glasses on, see? Yeah, if we could... Honestly, if we could just get a Spandine in our trash, we would have the most insane Ice Age here. So it'd be minus five on Luffy. We just need to do minus one more on the Eustace Kid. And we would be able to completely clear out this guy's top end, the top end of this guy's board by playing out a Gecko into Rebecca, into Spandine, into everything we need with Hell Meppos and, and whatever. But I will say this, it's time to start establishing these Gecko Morias. It, it is time to do that here. Okay, looks like we're going to attack first. Again, let's check the trash. Let's see what comes... I was going to say, I would swing for five with, with the leader first to see what goes in the trash. So we can see what we can do from here, right? Four into eight, we're just minus one, minus one. Play out another. Okay, play that out. Nice, we can get the uh, the Luchi. Actually, yeah, that's another option. I'm sorry, we can always just not even go for the full Rebecca combo. We can just go for straight up Luchi. Pop both of them, excellent. Yeah. 
I'm always used to getting the full value, though, with the span dine and everything. It just feels so good when you just go, boop, there goes the whole board. I got two four-cost characters down at one time. I get a searcher and or a Helmeppo or something, and the board's looking good. We're in, we're in really good shape to win this game now. Gecko Moria is a an absolute finisher, right? He will close games out so fast, it'll make your head spin. Now, right here, let's see what they're trying to do. Eight into six. Let him have it. Absolutely. No way I would have defended out of that. So that was a good call in my opinion. And right here, what can we do? We have minus... Okay, it looks like we're going to try to do a few things here. So honestly, hear me out. I, I would swing for five first with Brook. Like, attach one Dawn to Brook, swing for five at face, minus one to whatever you're trying to remove here, just to force them to do something. Is he going to use a blocker? Like, if he, if he blocks with Luffy, we could just swing 9 into Luffy with our with our Gekka Moria. And actually, we could even just go 7 into Luffy first, then 9 into Luffy to get cards out of hand. But it's like, otherwise, I think it's better to swing in this situation to do, to do minus 1 with Nami. Okay, going to play this out to pop it. Yeah, just put 1 on him. Okay, looks like you're just going to attack and do it. That's fine, too, if you want to save, save a little bit of Dawn. Sure. Now, now they'll just pass that. But that would at least force a card. That would at least force an interaction by swinging for 5, right? Okay, here we go. Looks like we're really trying to play out the Gecko Moria here. I, 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 I didn't see the trash. He did it too quick. I, I missed it. But I wonder if we have a Helmeppo in trash. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Swing for six. Minus one to the Uda. Maybe, the, maybe they'll block with Uda. Nice. We, we do like to see that, right? Like, that was actually really, really, that was, that was pretty ideal. Okay. They're taking everything. This is a little alarming here. I wonder if they're going to try to close out next turn with some type of I'm Invincible combo. Okay, maybe not. I'm surprised he did not just take that hit to get another card. Because hear me out, I think the only thing he could have done there... If Uda was trying to win this game, his, his only real chance, I think, of trying to win this game was doing what I was saying. Just take this last hit and maybe try to go... <laughs> I mean, he still wasn't going to win, but if he had, like, triple, um, you're the one who should, uh, or not you're the one, uh, I'm invincible. He could have swung three times with his leader and once with his, uh, with his Luffy, but the attack would have only been for three sixes and a seven. And we ha we already can counter out a two of those attacks in hand, and we have three life and a blocker. So, the only winning play he had left was to just take that hit. Okay, and he's still going to counter out. It's like, dude, you're not surviving next turn, right? I mean... So Am I crazy, guys? There's no way this guy wins next turn, right? There's no there's no way this Uda player can win at this point. We'll see. I, I don't think so. Okay. Uda uh, playing out the Nami, doing a top three search. D draws a Bluno, which is a blocker. But that is not going to do anything. Wherever he swings is just getting countered out of. Yeah, I, I would probably just... I would so, so hear me out. I would have just 2k, 2k out of that because the, he cannot win next turn. It, it's it's impossible. It's just like physically impossible at this point. You'll be able to swing so many times because then it would have been uh, swing 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 11, right? And he's just gone. Like th there's no way you can sur survive for that. And you probably could have removed... Yeah, excuse me. You could have also removed the uh, Bluno. Wait a minute. So... so um. So I would have just popped the Bluno here, right? Just just pop the Bluno to get the attack through. Because like I said, it's game over. It's it's just, he can't survive. He can't survive this point. This guy should just block with Bluno. There's no reason not to. Yep, sure. And then and then right here, because we're threatening that we can remove something. I do like the game, the mind games there saying like, oh, hey, I've got another Luchi. But okay, swing in for 14. That should be GG. Good game. Oh, this guy's sitting on a Zoro in hand. What a great card. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. Everyone knows how I feel about Zora. I think it's a perfect one or two of. But in certain situations like this, man, it's like you wished it was any other card in your hand. You know what I mean? All right, good game. That was a fun one. Um, I didn't see too many play mistakes. I would have just been a little more aggressive in certain situations. Like I was saying, the the one turn here, uh, when he had the uh, tapped Zoro. Excuse me. I think it was this turn right here. I would have just gone six into Zoro three times because we had eight Dawn, right? So it would have been two on Brook, one on the leader, and then swing, um, you know, three times. Swing with the Sabo, swing with the Brook, swing with the Rob Lucci. Everything into the Zoro to eat cards out of hand. And I would have been putting my minus ones and minus twos on the Usopp and Brook. And I would have popped those at the end of the turn anyway with my Rob Lucci. And that's just one thing I would have done a little bit differently. Let him attack in, let him attack into whatever he wants to here. Because our next turn, we're going to drop the Gecko when we need it. We, you know, but hey, in the end, it ended up working out just fine. Another thing here, like I said, is I would have just countered out of the, the um, it wasn't this turn, it was the next one right here. 
when he swings in right here for eight for 10k or it was nine right he swings in for 9k here yeah okay just waiting for him yeah right here we've got double 2k in hand might as well counter out of it and then on the following turn like i said don't even attack into this guy minus two bust it with your uh, bust it bust his gates wide open here with the brook popping his blockers and then just swinging all sevens through but you had it. you had a lock from here good game that was a fun one awesome okay give me one second guys to get set up all right we got a video to watch now we have got a video to watch from bandai some good stuff here one second all right here we go, guys. I do have the volume off, and I have it on 2x speed, so I'm going to pause it as needed. Let me move my microphone over just a little bit. All right, here we go. So One Piece card game. I will link this video in the comment section below for anyone who wants to watch this and slow it down and translate everything. No problem. It'll be in the comment section below if you want to do that. Okay, very cool stuff here. Got some anime, comic book stuff going on. I don't know. The manga. Who knows what's being said here? Uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything. So, guys, like I said... If you want to know what they're saying here, I will link in the comment section below for you to fully translate it. But all right, all right, here we go. Here come the spoilers. Ready? And we will break each one of these down. This is for OP09. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning, okay? All right, there's Lim, new leader. I have talked about a lot of these cards before. There's Nico Robin. There's the alt art, by the way. Check out the check out this the six cost alt art on the left there, guys. Looks amazing really incredible art. I love when it goes all the way to the borders with the art where they ex where they extend the border. It just looks so good. Okay, got some cool stuff here. We got some, we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, some of the newer cards, guys. Don't worry. I have talked about some of these cards already. Okay, pause. Move my head out of the way. Hang on. Let me move my head all the way up here. Check these out, guys. Check out these new um, special arts. I think they're called. It's like it's, it's yeah SP for special. These are like special alt art cards, guys. These look so incredible. They got one for each color. My favorite is obviously Lucci. It's not even close. Sorry, guys. For me, it's Luchi, and it's not even close. Nami looks good, too, of course. I like, you know, of course, they, they gave her a... This is an, an interesting pose here. A great angle. They gave her a great angle on this one. But Luchi, look at that background, guys. Do y'all see, like, the um, that jaguar leopard print or whatever that is? I don't know the exact animal. I think, I think it's a jaguar. <laughs> looks like, you know... It, it, that's what it looks like. That's what we're going with, okay? Some type of jaguar or leopard, some type of uh, big cat. A big cat print back there. We got Zoro. Zoro looks good, too. I think that's my second favorite one is the... Oh, never mind. The Rosnante. I just now noticed the green. So, green is one of my least played colors. I've mentioned that before. Green and purple, actually, are like some of my lowest played colors. But, man, that Rosinante art is clean, and so is the background. It looks so good. Dragon's looking solid, too, right? He's looking absolutely, you know, beast mode over there. Boa looks great as well. But I'm going with the three bros right here. The black, purple, and green look here. These look so good. Absolutely huge fan of all of those. They all look good, by the way. They all look good. But my three favorites are Zoro, Lucci, and Rosinante. They look great. Okay, let's keep going. We're almost to the spoilers now. Okay, very nice animation they do here. This looks, looks really good. Okay, check this out, guys. First of all, you know, I got to just keep moving my face everywhere for this one. Look at this crocodile at the top right, guys. That looks so good, that alt art there. That's a 7 cost, 7,000 power, 1k counter crocodile. Um, it's from, I think it's from OP02 it looks like on here. I can't really tell. I think this is the one. Is this the the crocodile? I, I Again, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't have like the translation in front of me. And, and, the, and the resolution is actually very low. Well, I mean, it says it's at 1080. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see it. But um, is this the one where you attack? It, it doesn't say, it doesn't look like... It, I can't even talk right now, guys. It does not look like the one where you attach a Dawn. I'm wondering if this one's actually from OP09. Because the one I was going to ask was, is this the one where you attach one Dawn and all of your cards cost less? But I see a Baroque Works uh, trigger in here somewhere, or uh, activation cost or, or uh, requirement. And, that, and then I don't see any kind of Dawn times one effect here. Or the Banish. That card also had Banish, I believe. Anyway, whatever this card is, uh, I think this is from OP09. Looks really good, though. Great art. We're going to look at this card in a minute. The card you see in the middle. Don't worry. We'll have that fully translated. Okay. Check this out, guys. This art goes so hard. Like, this art is is absolutely incredible, guys. Look, look at how good it is. That's one thing I have to say about One Piece. Being an art guy, being an art teacher, literally. Um, the art in this game is really incredible. I like the art in the game better than I like the art in the actual anime and the manga. Not to say that that's bad. Just, just you know, just being honest with you guys. But yeah, all right. Let's keep going. 
Uh, just looks so good. And here we go. We got Shanks here. Pauls, check it out. We got a bunch of cards on here to go over. Um, I, I think we do we do go over these, I believe. I have a slideshow prepared for us for all the uh, spoilers. How are we doing on time? Okay, I got to speed it up. All right, here we go. Check these out. We already knew about the leader. We already knew about Ben Beckman, I believe, and the the, uh, the new 10 call Shanks coming out. This guy looks like an absolute monster. Great alt arts for these. They look so incredible. Here's Blackbeard with his crew, with his posse, rolling up, looking, you know, looking menacing. You love to see it. We'll look at some of these. Don't worry, guys. Check out the alt art for the 10 cost 12K um, blocker Blackbeard or Marshall D. Teach, whatever they're going to call him. Yeah, I think it's Marshall D. Teach. So check that out, guys. That looks so sick. That looks so awesome. He's like cracking the front there with, you know, with, with a newly acquired uh, devil fruit, I'm sure, right? You know, some really cool stuff there. You know, and I'm big, I'm. I'm trying not to spoil anything, guys, but something he might have acquired at Marine Ford, right? That's what I was trying to say. Really good stuff here. Let's keep going. We got more spoilers, guys. We got more of them. Purple. Whoops. That was that was way too fast. I'm sorry, guys. So let me get back because I do have it on 2x speed right here. Check it out. I have gone over some of these, I believe, if not all of them, except this chopper down here. We will be going, we will be going over that one today. Holy cow, guys. Black, purple, monkey D. Luffy is going to be... It's probably going to be so sick. I don't know. Obviously, I'm not. Hey, I don't design the game. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know anyone at Bandai or anyone that makes the game. But man, these cards look so incredible. And wait till you see some of these effects. If you have not seen them already, they're incredible. They're absolutely um, awesome. That Frankie looks so good too. Okay, and check it out. The wanted pictures are back. I don't. I know a lot of people are fans of the wanted poster ones. Excuse me. I'm not a huge fan of them, but I think they're actually really cool and unique. So, hey, really good collector's pieces. Check these out. Wanted, dead or alive. We've got, oh, what's that? A 10 cost 12K buggy, right? 10 cost 12K shanks. That's the new one we've already seen. Uh, all, all of the 10 cost 12K stuff. Wait a second. And then I think the um, the Luffy one's a 9 cost one. Sorry, guys. I did have to rewind it. No, it's the 10 cost 12K time warp Luffy. Interesting. That's the OP05 Luffy, guys. So these other ones are OP09, right? That's, that's actually kind of interesting the way they decided to, to do that. Yeah, these two are OP09 characters. And of course, the one on the left here, Blackbeard, he's OP09 as well. But this Luffy is from all the way back in OP05. So that's kind of cool how they decided to do that. Okay, here we go. They're hyping something up here. Boom. Check this out, guys. These just, they all look so good, right? These are the four emperors, right? Just look so good. Manga. All four of them. Let me move my head again, man. My head is just always in the way. All four of these will have a manga card for them. Now, do you understand this nine cost Luffy we're about to look at in today's video, later in, in the video today? This is not the 10 cost time warp Luffy. I wish it was. I'm not going to lie. I mean, but it already has one, right? It already has one. But what if it was like the first one to have two just to match all of these 10 cost 12 case? But at the same time, I guess you could just play with that old one anyway, right? So, so never mind. That, this is fine as is. But really cool stuff there. Uh, a nine cost 10K. We're going to read what this card does in a minute. The uh, Luffy one. Okay, let's see what else. I think that's close to the end here. There's the date. It's going to come out August 31st. And then I think there's even, oh, what's this, you know? Bandai's so good at hyping this stuff up, right? Like, oh, well, yeah, something hidden in the back here. What's this? This Hey, hint, guys, spoiler warning. We haven't seen the secret rare for OP09 yet, have we? Uh-oh. What might this be? Uh-oh, we got some Supreme Conqueror's Hockey. A 10 cost. 13K. Okay, 13,000 slash character, you say, huh? Check it out, guys. There he is. The, the, the man, the myth, the legend right there. We got Gold D. Roger coming in. We're going to talk about him. Don't worry. We will get into this. Um, and then, let me see. Oh, I think they're going to show the alt art as well. Or something else. Okay, number one. Yeah, this is a form of the alt art. This is like a special gold rare. You know, some type of special gold foil. Um, I have not translated this, but it says parallel in the background. You see, like, right behind all these uh, Japanese characters. It says gold something... Gold's uh, super parallel. Excuse me. I can't. I, hey, I, I can read Japanese, guys. No, I'm just kidding. It says it in, in the, right behind the letters. Gold super parallel. Very cool stuff there. Look at the Supreme Conqueror's Hockey. Hey, and the Conqueror's Hockey also shows up when you're playing the game, too. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, like, that's uh, that looks amazing. And there's one other one that I actually like. Let me see if they show the other art. They don't. Okay. So that's coming August 31st in the East. Sorry, not trying to get your hopes up, guys. That's coming out in the East. Okay, now we can look at those spoilers. Let's segue from that video and actually translate some of the spoilers we just saw right there. Uh, 
Again, guys, spoiler warnings on spoiler warnings on spoiler warnings. They're, they're all coming in. They're coming in hot here. Okay. Whoops. You weren't supposed to see that. Don't worry. We'll come back to it. Most people probably already know what it is, right? But okay. First up here, we've got Lime Juice. This is the three cost, 3,000 power, 2K counter. Um, this card here is a Red Hair of Pirates. This is, let me zoom in a little more for you guys. Hopefully, y'all can read that okay. Lime Juice is a three cost, 3,000 power, 2K counter, Red Hair of Pirates character, guys. On play, up to one of your opponent's characters with power 4,000 or less cannot activate blocker for the rest of this turn. Get used to that, guys. That on play there, the not activating blocker thing, that's going to become a red theme, I think. Red's going to have, like, power manipulation and then, like, you can't block me, I think. That, that seems like it's going to be a new theme. I have to say right now, guys, that that... Okay, so let me say it one more time. Up to one of your opponent's characters with power 4,000 or less cannot activate blocker for the rest of this turn. That is one of the most insane 2K counters, like utility 2K counters, that Red's probably ever seen. Because number one, it does not say your your opponent's character's um, like standard power or base power. You can drop their power down with, with another effect, maybe like the stage or something, or Otama, or a Gordon, or something like that. Or, hey, the new Shanks card not the leader, the actual 10, 10, uh, 10 cost 12k with Rush, drops everyone's power by 1,000. So you play this card down as a 2k counter, and they cannot activate blocker on whatever that card is. And that, guys, that could just be absolutely insane. I think this is an incredible utility 2k counter. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have mentioned this before in uh, other videos talking about spoilers from OP09. I think the new red, red-haired pirates are going to be absolutely incredible, and I think it will be the first time we really see a true blue, well, okay, not blue, a, a true, you know, I, mean, I was just trying to say, like, a, a actual true red control deck. You know what I mean? I think that will be really cool. Big fan of this card. Next up, we've got Uda. We've got a nice searcher here. This is a film card, but it is an on-play. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Reveal up to one red-haired pirates card and add it to your hand. Then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. She is film searchable, by the way, which I think is kind of interesting. Oops, let me zoom out a little bit. I think that's actually kind of interesting because maybe there will be a red film, uh, like a film Red Hair Pirates package that is just kind of doubled up. I don't know. We'll have to see in the future. Obviously, you know, that's for deck building way down the line. Just a great searcher. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but her being a film type that searches up Red Hair Pirates type, that could be interesting to make, like I said, like some type of film Red Hair Pirates hybrid because I think there are quite a few cards that are like that already. Okay, next card. We got Professor Clover. Check this guy out. Let me zoom out a little bit. I tried to put, the, you know, people have asked me to, you know, give credit to the people who translate these cards. So that's why I have the names at the top now, guys, so y'all can see who translated the card because people do like to get their credit. I totally understand and I totally respect that. So check out Professor Clover, guys. This is a one cost, zero power oh Ohara 2K counter. And look at this, guys. On play, if your leader is Nico Robin, Nico Robin is getting some support, guys. Look at the top three cards of your deck, reveal and add up to one card with a trigger to your hand and return the rest to the bottom of your deck in any order. Trigger, activate this card's on play effect. So you can, like, if you get it from the trigger, so that's good, right? Because you can search up cards with triggers. But also you can just play the card out as well. And it's a 2K counter in hand. This is just a great card for Nico Robin. I think Nico Robin is going to have a lot of answers early on. Like it's going to have, I think it's probably going to be a very strong deck just right out of the gates. But I'll, I, I have mentioned where I think the leaders will be. But we'll talk more about that later. Okay, I'll try to, if I remember, guys, I will put that in the comment section below telling you guys where I think the leaders will be from OP09 because I've already kind of done a video on that. Okay, next one up here, we got Liberation. This is a four-cost Blackbeard Pirates event, Black event. It has a main effect. It costs four. So it better be pretty strong, right? If it's going to cost four and it's an event, it's not a counter, it's a main. If your leader has the Blackbeard Pirates type, choose up to one of your opponent's characters and negate their effects for this turn. Then, if that character has a cost of four or less, just flat out KO the character. Uh, trigger, it, it says unconfirmed because you notice at the bottom of the card, it is like kind of like um, it's overlapped by another card. So they don't know exactly what the cost might be, but it says, but their, their, their uh, unconfirmed translation is choose up to one of your opponent's characters, negate its effect for the turn. So it looks like you're, it's basically the same thing as the main, but it doesn't have the chance to KO is what it looks like it'll be just from a rough translation where a little bit is unconfirmed. Uh, but guys, that activate main, remember guys, blocking's an effect, right? So, I mean, this just can shut down a blocker. And then if, if they have a cost of four or less, it's out of here, KO, see you later. I think this card is great. I think this card is awesome. 
it is leader locked so that does hurt me a little bit as someone who plays like almost exclusively like black you know any deck that runs black i'm probably going to play it right yes i'm on my red yellow saba art currently for the channel but black is still one of my favorite colors in this game if not still my actual favorite color along with yellow black and yellow are like my, my ways to go okay this card absolutely incredible though sensational big fan and if I miss anything, guys, or if I overlook something, please help me out in the comment section below. Like, hey, what about with this interaction or this interaction? I love to see what you guys come up with because, hey, with all this combined, you know, all these combined minds, we can come up with some really cool stuff. So here's that event we were looking at in the spoiler. Cross Guild, one cost, blue event, rare, Cross Guild. Uh, it's, a, it's a Cross Guild event called Cross Guild, okay? <laughs> Very, sometimes when Bandai does that, man, it's just my mind. Okay. Main, look at the top four cards of your deck, reveal and add to your hand up to one card with the type Cross Guild. Then, return the rest to the bottom of your deck in any order, and then trigger, you can activate the card's main effect. So just a top four searcher for Cross Guild. It even has a trigger to activate the main. I think this card's solid. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Just excellent utility card. All right, we've got Chopper here. Here we go. Tony, Tony Chopper. Purple, five cost. The power, we don't know yet, but I will, I will tell you what I think it is. It is a 1k counter, uh, Straw Hat Crew. End of your turn, return one or more Dawn cards to your Dawn deck. Remember, guys, with the black, purple, Luffy leader, it says if you return two or more cards, uh, two or more Dawn cards to your Dawn deck this turn, uh, I think it's once per turn, you can add a rested Dawn card and an active Dawn card. So that's probably what this is geared around, you know, uh, support for. Okay, set this character as active. So in a turn, you can swing in, set this character as active, really really strong and then this character gains blocker until the end of your opponent's next turn that's actually massive right so now you're going to be able to attack with this guy and then at the end of your turn you can return two dawn cards you're going to get him right back and then he stands up and now he's a blocker uh this chopper card is absolutely incredible if i had to guess this is probably going to be a five cost 6k right because that's what we see a lot of these effects from especially since he's going to have to return dawn cards to even do this in a turn effect if they make him a 5 cost 5k, I will be slightly um, disappointed. I'll be slightly disappointed if it's a 5 cost 5k. I think this card deserves to be a 5 cost 6k because this effect does require you to pretty much play in only one. You, you can only play this card in one leader currently, if you actually think about it, right? Because at the end of your turn, you're returning two Dawn cards back. So I don't know. I guess maybe at the end of... Okay, I take that back. You can play it in any leader, obviously. Yeah, especially when you're at 10 Dawn, returning two Dawn cards doesn't even matter. Because then you can stand this guy up and get blocker. But still, I could see this being a 5 cost 6k. I think it's right on, you know, yeah, it's just par for the course for a 5 cost 6k. But we'll have to see what happens. I have no idea. All right, now we got some big cards to look at, guys. We got some big cards. Buggy, 10 cost, 12,000 power, cross scaled four emperors. On play. Check out this on play, guys. Return up to one of your opponent's characters to the bottom of the deck. So he comes into play, bounces any character to the bottom of your opponent's deck. Then, if you do not control five characters with a cost of five or more, you have to return this character to the bottom of the deck. <laughs> and remember, guys, uh, this is a cross guild character, so you will be able to cheat him out with your leader's effect. Right? I believe that's correct. I have not read the, the, uh, the new uh, buggy leader in a while, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So that could actually that could actually be very very incredible, and one more thing I want to mention about this this character in particular, he is not leader locked. Okay, he's not leader locked. I mean, yes, it is a ten cost blue card, and how how easy is it going to be to get a bunch of five cost characters down without having the the leader effect that, that that we were just talking about for buggy? But I just think that's still interesting. I do think that is still very interesting because if you can start filling out the board later in the game and you got nothing but five cost characters down, this card could be crazy, right? We'll, we'll have to see again. You know, obviously this wouldn't work in something like a, uh, this would not work in something like a Doflamingo or something, but I'm just saying that there might be another blue deck that comes out of this because that opens up a lot of possibilities. But regardless, I do think it will probably be best in the uh, the new blue buggy leader. Really cool stuff there. 10 calls, 12k, bounce any card back to the opponent's hand. And then again, even if, I mean, I don't know. We, there's already red rock. Like, let me say that. If you cannot get the second part of this effect down, I don't think it's worth running because, and I mean consistently, obviously, because otherwise this card is just a 10 cost red rock for us without a trigger. You know what I mean? I know it's not cross guild searchable or something like that, but still, I just, I don't know. If I cannot hit this consistently to like stick it on the board and bounce, then I don't think it's quite as good, but hey, still a very potentially powerful effect here. Okay. We got, I think we got two more guys. 
Here's that 9 cost 10k, uh, the new manga Luffy coming out for OP09. This is a 9 cost, 10,000 power, Straw Hat Crew character, secret rarity. On play, you may return one or more Dawn card from your play to your Dawn deck. So remember, one or more. So you're going to want to return two if you're running the new Purple Black Luffy. Then you're going to draw one card. Then this character gains Rush for this turn. So you're plopping down a 9 cost 10k, you're returning two Dawn cards, you're drawing a card, this card gets Rush. And if it's in the purple black deck we're talking about, that will actually make this card really only cost eight dawn, right? Which which is crazy. Which is crazy. And then you, and then he has rush, like I said. So he's just he's just knocking down the doors. This card is very very strong, knocking down the gates. Uh, really good stuff here. I don't have a lot to say about this this character other than he is just straight gas. This character is straight gas. It will probably lead to even more of a tempo deck. I mean, lit I think. Hang on, I, uh, I believe yesterday, in yesterday's video, I show off a red-purple Luffy deck. And honestly, guys, or maybe it was the, the video before that, I'll link it in the comment section below. This would just be a natural inclusion into that deck. And then on the next turn, after I've gotten a swing with this guy twice, I'm just going to clean up the board, you know, with, with whatever I can, or just go for face, and then just drop the 10-cost Luffy, gear 5, and we're just going to run him over. You know what I mean? That could be so powerful, guys, in, you know, in the right deck. Really looking forward to messing around with this one. Purple Straw Hats, I keep saying it. I think they look so strong. They look so fun. They, they look like so much fun, guys. I can't wait to mess with those. Okay, I think we got one more, guys. We got one more here. Let me zoom in. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll go down. We'll, we'll appreciate the art in a second. Bear with me. Hang on. Goal D. Roger. This is a red character, 10 cost, 13,000 power, Pirate King, Roger Pirates. Rush. It's a 10 cost, 13K with Rush, guys. Okay, I, I probably don't need to say anything more than that, right? But when your opponent activates blocker, this is a static effect. Understand this, guys. This is a static effect. When your opponent activates blocker, if you or your opponent have zero life, you win the game. So do you understand what's going on there? If you or your opponent have zero life and your opponent activates blocker, any time in the turn, not just when this guy attacks, any time in the turn, that's game. So in other words, it's like, okay, say you're at one life, right? Um, or say your opponent's at one life, I should say. And you attack in for 13, and they take that hit, that's when they should have used the blocker, right? Because now, you know, if you swing in with another character and they try to activate blocker, too late, they, they lose. Because this effect, if it, if it is translated correctly, this effect is not locked to just when he attacks. It is when your opponent activates blocker, it says comma, but period, right? If you or your opponent have zero life, you win the game. It's that simple. This card's insane. Uh, really, really strong. Let me let me zoom out now so we can appreciate the art a little bit. Let me, uh, well, I can't really move this. Whatever. Let me just move my head over. There we go. This art. Uh, so I am a big fan of the special gold rare, the, the gold parallel. I do think that looks good. But I think this one on the right just looks way better. This one right here. It just looks so good. Uh, huge fan of this one. The art's incredible. Um, yeah, not, not enough good things to say about it. Um, I do think that this card, let me move my head back for now. I do think that this card is pretty insane, but I don't know if it's broken. And I know that's like a, you know, what do you mean? Like, I think a lot of people think the card might be broken. Maybe it is, who knows? Uh, but I don't think it's broken. I think this card is an incredible finisher for red. But honestly, guys, we already have that in Shanks. The new Shanks coming out in OP09 with this card. That that new Shanks card is insane, guys. I hope y'all I hope y'all uh, understand how good the card is. I'm talking about the 10 cost 12k with Rush that makes all of your opponent's characters minus 1,000 power on your turn and theirs. That card just sets us up for success for every following turn. Now, one thing I will say about this character is it is a great closer. Like this is probably one of the best finishers you could ever ask for. 10 cost 13k if they're at if excuse me if they're at zero life it's over right like they, they're unless they somehow have like four dawn open with all these events support you know like all these like you know one cost 4ks or two cost 4k events i don't see them getting out of the next turn it's possible anything's possible but yeah i think this card is very strong big fan of it this will probably be this is my infamous you know at this point you know like i have the same idea of this card as i do for zoro I think this is just a great one or two of, guys. I know everyone's probably like, what? What do you mean? Just run four of them. You just keep playing them back to back to back. It's like, do you have an opponent you're playing against? <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, if you just start chaining these back to back, you just get run over. Like, yes, you'll get to swing for five with your leader. Easy 1K counter out, right? 
Then swing for 13 with this guy. They take it. Go down to like, you know, what, three, two, maybe one life. <laughs> now it's their turn to swing at you. You know what I mean? And that's where Shanks just feels like he's better, in my opinion. Because Shanks is like, all your guys just got nerfed, and you can go from there. Either way, I'm not trying to put a damper on the party. I think this card's incredible. But I think it's as I think it's incredible just like Zoro is. Where it's like, yes, this card is absolutely insane in the correct in, in, in the right situation, it just ends the game. Same thing with Zoro. I only want one or two of these though, so that way the rest of my deck can get me to the point where this card can win the game, if that makes sense. Okay? Really good stuff there. Right, guys, that's it for the spoilers. We are at least gonna end the video off with a game on the sim. A little bit of a uh, Gecko Moria action. Let me make sure that was the end, right? Yeah, that was the end. So now we got a quick game on the sim. Uh, this was from, um, this was not the most recent patch. I believe this is like um, two or three patches ago for the OPTCG sim. Whoops, let me go full screen. Oh, I already am. Okay. So the volume is off. Speed is on 2x already. And let's just go ahead and just dive into this, guys. So we got a game versus Red Purple Law. And I will say this, going first, I do think that um, Gecko has a pretty decent advantage into Red Purple Law. Okay, and notice I am running an OP05, uh, excuse me, OP08 version of the deck. Okay, go ahead and bust out Absalom, start popping these Gordons. I'm just going to get these out of the way. They were probably trying to play around Perona to some extent, I'm not sure. But hey, I'm just going to bash in for six and pop these with my with my uh, Absalom. Getting a, getting a, um, a one-cost Sindri was very strong there as well. But hey, I have to get these guys off the board. Um, that card, Raise Max, is so annoying. You know, it's like you just have to get rid of it if you can, if it's possible. So now he's going to play out. Okay, he is going very aggressive here. Now he's going to cheat out another card, get rid of that, draw up two more with with, with uh, Raise You. So strong. Okay, so right here, we're just bashing in. So I was going to, yeah, I'm going to play out the prone here. I, I was really thinking, like, hear me out. I was actually thinking about Ice Aging one of these cards and just KOing it with my other Absalom. But I'd rather get cards out of their hand, keep going towards the board. But looking back, I probably should have done the uh, the play with Absalom just to fully clear out the board and slow him down in that way. Because what is Ice Age really going to be good for in this matchup? There is no, like, huge target red purple law plays. Okay, so slight play mistake in my opinion. Okay, swing for five. I have to take that. They're swinging for seven. I'm going to take that. Play out Gordon. Minus two there. Minus three, Black Maria, they're back up to five dawn. Okay, seems good. Seems pretty good. By the way, guys, at the time you're recording this video, tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow's the big day when we find out, or it might even be, depending on when you're listening to this, it's either like late, late tonight, or tomorrow when we find out what the new bans and restriction list is going to be. I cannot wait. Of course, I will make a video on it. Cannot wait. Okay, notice I have a Kaido in my hand, guys. I'm kind of, you know, I'm messing around with a new idea here. All right, this ends up being a very nice play here. Hina, seven into that, minus, you know, minus three there. Pop that, pop that. Okay, he's down to nothing. He's got five cards in hand, but he just keeps drawing cards. Raise you into queen, into raise you, into queen. It's just so powerful, guys. That really is, I feel like, what makes Red Purple Law so strong is the fact that they get to draw so many cards. Because if they were just, like, getting rid of cards and then they had no way to refill them or not a very strong way to refill them, then it probably wouldn't be that bad to weather the storm. But when they're just drawing, like, extra cards every turn, fixing their hand, getting bodies, removing your characters, it, 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 it's rough. Okay, so I play out the Kaido there. I'm in pretty good shape to, to close out the game. I'm swinging it for five. If they take this, I know they're going all in next turn. They, they still might be going all in this turn. We'll have to see. Okay, five and a five. I'm like, okay, so they're not trying to go all in. I'm going to keep my body on the board. They're going to swing six and a five. I've got two. I've got all 2K counters in hand. Minus three there. Bottom deck it. Play out the raise you. My turn. Drawing more cards again. So right here, I wonder, do I have a... Um, do I, okay, I, do, I was going to say, do I have an Absalom in the trash? Because I've already lost two to the bottom of my deck. So I did. We'll swing in for 10 there. He gets out of it. I, for, I forgot to swing for five with my Hina. That was a play mistake. That, that was absolutely a play mistake. My opponent only has five cards this turn, but I only have one life, no blocker, and two 2k counters. We're about to see what happens here. Here we go. Swing for seven. Okay. I need just a 1k counter, and I'm fine. I get a 1k counter. We're fine. So 2k. Well, I got a 2k counter. 2k, 2k, GG. Good game. So that's all they could do in that situation. They didn't have any more rushers. They, they came at me so aggressive out the gate that they had nothing left. Even after going through two Raju's, and a queen. So like I said, I do think that uh, Gecko Moria is slightly favored. I just I just think he is. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay. That's that. Let's go ahead and check out the deck list and we can finish off this video. 
guys, I am so excited to see OP09 stuff, and I can't wait to start playing with it on the sim as well whenever they, you know, whenever they're able to update that. No rush, of course, I'm just saying when it is available. So this is the list I was running. This is like an OP08 version of Gecko Moria. I'm not saying it's perfect. I was just kind of messing around with some ideas. It's very top-heavy. Like, notice this, two eight drops here, four here, three nine drops, two seven drops. That's a little top-heavy, in my opinion, maybe a little too top-heavy. Like, I think I could get rid of the E-shows. Let me just say that. I think I can get rid of the E-shows, or even this Kaido. Maybe I just don't, I, you know, I was trying out a new card. I was trying out the new OP08 cards, Jack and Kaido. But honestly, maybe I just get rid of Kaido, and if I can just pin an E-show down, my Gecko Moria is going to eat, you know, He's going to be eating good, right? My, my leader effect with the Absalom, Gekka Mori bringing, up, bringing back Absaloms and Helmepos. And I also need to add like Rebecca to the list, in my opinion. I, I think it's missing a Rebecca. I've got three Sabos, but maybe I go down one Hina, uh, go down two Ishos, or excuse me, go down uh, two Kaidos. Maybe go down all three. Hang on, excuse me. Go down one Hina and go down all three Kaidos and then just add um, four Rebeccas or something along those lines. Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. You guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Gecko Mori is still a very relevant list, guys. I think it's still doing just fine, even in OP07 for us over here in the West. And who knows? We'll have to see what happens. Um, with the band's restriction list coming out, like, like I said, in, in my next video, I'll be talking about it. So we'll have to see what happens, and we can go from there. All right, guys, that's about it. Let me go ahead and put up the play map page. Thank you to everybody who supports the channel, whether you're just liking, sharing, subscribing, viewing, commenting, whatever you're doing. It really helps me out. It feeds the algorithm. Uh, so big shout out to you for anyone who's just helping. Another big shout out to the Playmat supporters, guys. I hope you're enjoying your Playmats. I've been seeing them pop up all over the place on Discord and whatnot. I love to see it. You love to see it. And then, uh, of course, anyone who um, supports the page or supports the uh, channel just by donating. Thank you guys so much. Uh, everyone who's just, I mean, like I said, everyone you see on the screen right now has just donated money just to help me out to keep this thing going, to keep the dream alive. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, well, that's about it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Please do not forget to like and subscribe in this video if you have not already. And um, if you guys got any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. Do not hesitate. I try to answer those as fast as I can. All right, that's enough. Until next time, guys, peace.